Yep, you read that title correctly. It's possible to calculate yeah. pi by tossing frozen sausages. Yes, literal sausages. But how and why in the world would tossing literal sausages calculate the value of pi? Well, before we ask too many questions, let's first see how this process actually works. We take a sausage with an arbitrary length and then apply tape with intervals of the sausage's length apart on a table. You then throw the sausage as many times as you want and record your throws along with the amount of sausages crossing a piece of tape. You take the number of throws divided by the number of crosses and then multiply the whole thing by 2. You are left with a neat little approximation of pi. At first, this felt like a little glitch in reality or one of those wikiHow memes, but it's actually a question posed in probability theory. Originally, sausages weren't thrown, but instead needles were used in Buffon's needle problem. The problem asked if a needle were dropped onto the floor with parallel stripes of equal width, what is the probability that the needle will lie across a line between two of the strips? The intention of this was to solve a geometric problem containing probability, though its solution unintentionally led to a new way to approximate pi. Turns out, the probability of a needle crossing with length equal to the width is just 2 over pi. With a little algebraic rearrangement, we can get a cool approximation for pi. It should go without saying, however, that the sausage is just a random object chosen to denote a line segment. It could be a needle, matchstick, poisonous snake, or even a pencil that you use to calculate pi, though they wouldn't taste as good. Unless you have a thing for pencils, I guess. The point still remains, however, that if repeated enough times, tossing sausages can indeed calculate an accurate value of pi. So how many times do the sausages need to be tossed in order to actually get close to pi? Well, I didn't feel like tossing a thousand frozen sausages on a table, so I just wrote a program sending sausage sprites to random positions and calculating when the sprites touch a line, indicating overlap. Let's see the value for 10 sausages. Now for 100. And finally for 1000. We can clearly see that it starts to get close at around 100 sausages, but only really gets into the precision of decimal points later on. It's worth mentioning, however, that the simulation is not perfect, as the ideal Buffon's needle should not have width unlike the sausages used in our sprites. Despite this, the program shows how sausages really can be used to calculate pi. However, there is still one question to be asked. Why is the probability of landing on a line 2 over pi? Well, it's time for the part of the video that you either love or hate. The complicated maths part! Buffon's needle problem was solved through a combination of probability density functions and double integrals. Yes, this has to do with tossing sausages, bear with me. Let the sausage have a length L, this would also mean that the distance between each line is also L. Now let's define a variable, Y, which is the distance of the center of the sausage from the closest line. Y ranges from 0 to L over 2, and considering that the needle can fall anywhere with equal chance, the probability density function of y is just 2 over l. Along with the location of the sausage, we also need to account for the random rotation of the sausage. While the sausage can theoretically rotate 2 pi radians, its symmetry means there can only really be distinct shapes obtained from 0 to pi over 2 radians. If this angle here is theta, then the probability density function of theta is 2 over pi. Now that we have the two defined variables, we need to understand what conditions would constitute crossing a line. Because the lines extend indefinitely, its x value does not matter, and the only thing determining if it crosses a line is its y value. The sausage would cross the line if y is less than L over 2 times sine theta. This is crucial in calculating the probability, as we now have a condition describing what concretely counts as crossing and not crossing the line. To create a continuous sum of every possibility and account for its probability, we need to create a double integral with the joint probability density function. This is the most complicated thing I've ever seen. This evaluates to 2 over pi. All that is left is a simple algebraic rearrangement that reveals an expected value for the repeated tossing of sausages. 
crazy how much stuff is behind the mathematics of tossing sausages. It is important to note, however, that this method relies solely on probability. There exists a chance, a relatively small one, but not zero, that every sausage could miss the line and cause a division by zero error, or that every sausage could hit a line and give pi equals one. Despite how great tossing sausages are, it is worth noting that this is by no means the most effective, more efficient way of calculating pi. That being said, sausages can get close to pi. So while sausages may just seem like a cool party trick to calculate our circle constant, it is perhaps one of the most strangely elegant ways of doing so. Okay, normally I try to have like a moral, like, oh yeah, like maths is a beautiful subject or something, but like, I'm staring at a sausage with a halo and wings, so I, I really don't know how to end this video.